What is the IUPAC nomenclature of the two structures represented using the shared confirmation? Feel free to pause the video if you want to try it. So how can we name this compound? When you see the chair confirmation, think of the parent name cyclohexane, because that's what we have. We have a six carbon atom, I mean a six carbon ring. So that's the parent name, cyclohexane. And no matter which way we count it, we're going to get a one, four number. In. So this is going to be one, two, three, four. Now it's better to have the ethyl group on carbon one than the methyl group on carbon one because E comes before M. So we're going to put it in alphabetical order. To name it, it's going to be one ethyl, four methyl, cyclohexane. So that's the IUPAC nomenclature for this molecule. Now what about for the second example? Well, the parent name is still the same, cyclohexane. But now, should we count it this way? Or should we count it in the other direction? B comes before C, so we want the one to be on bromo instead of chloro. So it's better to count it this way. So we have a bromine on carbon one, one bromo, a chlorine on carbon three, so three chloro, and then cyclohexane. So that's how we can name this particular compound. Go ahead and try this one. Actually, before we do that, let's go back. Now, this particular confirmation is it cis or trans? Whenever you have the chair confirmation, if you have two substituents, you could have cis and trans isomers. So notice that the ethyl group is in the axial up position. The methyl group is in the axial down position. So because one is down, the other is up, this is going to be trans. So we can say this is trans. 1-ethyl-4-methyl-cyclohexane. Now what about the second example? So the chlorine is in the axial up position and the same is true with the bromine. So because both of them are going up, this is going to give us a cis isomer. So this is cis 1-bromo-3-chloro-cyclohexane. Now for the next example, we're going to have more than two substituents. We're going to have three substituents on it. So what is the IUPAC nomenclature for that compound? So should we count it this way, where we will get one, three, four, or should we count it this way? where the substituents will be on 1, 2, and 4. 1, 2, 4 is lower than 1, 3, 4, so we want to count it in that direction. So always count it in a way that gives you the lowest numbers for the substituents. Fluoro comes before methyl, so it's going to be 1 fluoro, and then 2, comma 4, dimethyl, cyclohexane. So that's the IUPAC nomenclature for that particular compound. Now let's try one more example. Let's say we have one methyl group and two ethyl groups. 
go ahead and provide the IUPAC nomenclature for that compound. So we need to number it in the appropriate direction. If we number it this way, the substituents will be on 136, which is not good. If we number it this way, it will be 125. We don't want to do it that way. And if we number it this way, this is better, 124. Or if we number it this way, this will be 134, which is not the best. So 124 represents the lowest possibility that we can get. So we're going to count it in this direction. Ethyl comes before methyl. So we're going to write that first. So this is going to be 1,2-diethyl and then 4 methyl cyclohexane. So now you know how to name cycloalkanes when presented using chair confirmations.